Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Athena Executive Director, Cheryl Goodman. Well, hello, hello. How are you beautiful, intelligent women? And I saw some good looking men out there too. Very, very good to see everyone. You look great, have a seat. We're gonna have fun tonight, right? It's not a funeral, people. It's an awards industry scholarship. Let's give it up. Right on. That's what I'm talking about. OK, so grab your seats. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Cheryl Goodman. I'm the executive director here at Athena. But I've also been a longtime member of Athena for many years. Uh, the majority of my career has been with the STEM community. I was in software, hardware. I've been in Fortune 100s and a startup founder. And I feel honored to be your advocate for women in STEM tonight uh, via Athena. This organization, many may not know, was founded in 1989. So almost 30 years of serving women. And we remain as relevant as ever. Never before has the conversation about inclusion and the need for female leaders in STEM ever been louder. An inclusive workforce is a revenue-producing workforce. And Athena is here to amplify the critical need for innovation and business leadership driven through inclusion. The Pinnacle Awards exemplify what today's leadership looks like. And now, in our 19th year, Athena's Pinnacle Gala Awards is the event where connections are made, futures are ignited, innovations are celebrated, innovators are celebrated for their stellar contributions to leadership in STEM and all of those service providers out there who support them. Athena's mission is to promote the platform for women's personal and professional aspirations. We connect, we mentor, we recognize leaders such as the leaders in the room tonight uh, for their significant contributions to their field. Athena also sounds the call to businesses to make a conscious decision uh, about diversity at the executive level. And we do that through press outreach, through partnering with STEM organizations, uh, with white papers, some of which are in your materials tonight. We curate content, we publish ori original provoking articles, and we also produce original research and surveys about this market, which is critically important. I hope that you are as inspired by tonight's event as I am by all the nominees that I've seen here tonight. And I would like to invite all of this year's nominees to please stand and be recognized. <laughs> Woohoo! You are the reason we exist and the reason we continue to grow. Congratulations for the recognition you've received from your peers. And a big round of applause, and thank you so much for all those contributions. Um, and then I want to say this is very important. We got a lot of social media handles out there. We want great pictures of all these celebrations. Make sure that you hashtag Pinnacle Awards 217 and the art of possible, because all this science and technology is the art of possible. You make amazing things possible. And now, it is my pleasure to introduce Constance Maples, Athena's chair of the board. Constance has been a longtime member of Athena, and she's also been the co-chair for Pinnacle for the last three years. Her leadership and experience serve as an inspiration and a resource for the Athena staff, the board of directors, and for our members. Please welcome Constance Maple, chair of Athena board. On behalf of the Athena Board of Directors and the Athena Foundation Board, I would like again to thank all of you for joining us here tonight as we recognize extraordinary talent in STEM, the companies that are committed to diversity in the workplace, and our future STEM leaders who will receive the Athena Pinnacle Scholarships. This year, we had a record number of nominees, 95 amazing professionals in seven different categories. 
Athena is committed to mentoring entrepreneurship as a critical component of growth in our communities. For the first time this year, we're excited to recognize startups in both technology and biotech. But before we move on to the awards, I would also like to thank some of the people who made this event possible. First, let's thank our judges. They spent endless hours evaluating, debating, and selecting the winners from a huge pool of outstanding talent. We had Tina Donaldson from Google, Nels Jensen from the San Diego Business Journal, Lisa Manzik from Pfizer, Ginny Merrifield, Pacific Ridge School, Ann O'Donnell from the UC San Diego Jacobs School of Engineering, Joey Parmenter from KPBS, and Howard Wright from Intel. Thank you to our judges. I would also like to thank our incredibly dedicated co-chairs, Tracy Parrott, who unfortunately cannot be with us this evening, and Michelle Comtois. Thank you both for an outstanding job. And where would we be without our pinnacle committees? Kelly Cashin, Becky Mossman, Ann O'Donnell, Aboli Rain, excuse me, it's Aboli, Amy Rowmaker, Don Saunders, Stephanie Skolnick, and Sarah Wiggins. We are so grateful for all of your hard work and dedication. We're also incredibly grateful to the dozens of volunteers who have been here all day and who will likely be here till well after all of us have gone. Let's give a hand to all of our fantastic volunteers. Of course, the Pinnacle Awards would not be possible without the support of our sponsorship partners, all of whom are dedicated to diversity and advancement of women in the traditionally male-dominated STEM fields. We would like to thank our title sponsor, Qualcomm, our presenting sponsors, Alexandria, Sony, and Viasat, our supporting sponsors, the Academy of Our Lady of Peace, Bank of America, the Center for Creative Learning, Desk Hub, Mince Levin, my Startup XX and Scale Matrix. Also, a thank you to our media sponsors, KPBS, San Diego Business Journal, Giving Back Magazine, Inceive Interactive, and Stalwart Communications. We are so very fortunate to have many dedicated sponsors and partners. Our title sponsor for this evening, Qualcomm, is one such important partner. Their commitment to Athena has grown over the years as we have grown as an organization. The world is filled with dots. Let's connect a few. Let's connect the guy who stuck a fork in the gaslight industry to the dude who brought music to the masses, to the woman who, 70 years ago, taught computers how to understand English and still had time to be an admiral in the Navy. How gangster is that? That's right, we just said gangster about an inventor. Because the real bad boys and girls of this world aren't bikers or sharp-tongued supervillains or renegades who play by their own rules. They're everyone who jams a thumb in the eye of the status quo and goes out and wizards up something new. Every act of invention, by definition, is an act of insurrection. Necessity may be invention's baby mama, but rebellion is its restless dad. The world is filled with dots. Connecting them is how everything gets invented, how this one thing we all share keeps getting reinvented. So buckle your seatbelts, because Qualcomm is leading the world to 5G, and 5G is going to make those dots multiply exponentially. And what in the name of Leonardo is going to happen next? You tell us. You're the genius, you're the insurgent, insubordinate, insurrectionary, inventor. And your time is at hand. Hell, a whole huge invention revolution is at hand. You are not about to shine, boys and girls. You're about to monster this moment. Because the company that changed everything about the phone is now making the things that are going to change everything about everything else. All so you can shock and scare and dare this world into becoming a finer and more excellent excellent place. Hey Thor, your hammer is ready.
And now, it is my distinct honor to welcome Vicki Mueller Burke, Vice President and Chief Diversity Officer for Qualcomm. Hello, Athena. Uh, thank you very much, Constance. Uh, I'm so excited to be here tonight, and it's my honor to represent Qualcomm and to once again support Athena and the Pinnacle Awards. We wanted to start with that video, not just to show a flashy Qualcomm commercial, but because I think this message of connecting the dots is spot on for tonight's event. Connecting the dots for professional women in San Diego, that's what Athena has been doing for years. Connecting more dots through scholarship and opportunities for outstanding aspiring STEM students that is Athena. The Pinnacle Awards shine a spotlight on the critical issues of diversity in business and underscores the importance of women in STEM in creating more productive and profitable companies. It also holds up role models for our future. Together, we are advancing and making progress on the critical issues of diversity in the workplace. And as you can probably tell by my title, Qualcomm is committed to this cause. And although I've been at Qualcomm for over 20 years in various business leadership roles, I've only had this role of Chief Diversity Officer for six months. And Qualcomm views diversity and inclusion as a business strategy, which is why they tapped a business leader like me to drive it. But like you, I'm more than my job title. I'm a professional working woman in a male-dominated industry who's had to work tire tirelessly to be in position for that next project, that next opportunity, that next promotion. And I'm also a mom who wants to ensure that I do everything in my power to make the career journey a little easier for my daughter and her generation than it was for me. Qualcomm ha Thank you. Qualcomm has a long-standing commitment to both inclusion and diversity, as well as a rich history of innovation. We, be, we believe that inclusion and diversity are at the very heart of innovation. Innovation requires different perspectives to take an idea, perfect it, and turn it into world-changing technology. And we do have a diverse workforce. Our employees represent 111 different nationalities. And we speak over 72 languages but we still don't have nearly enough women. We need many more women to pursue STEM degrees so that my colleagues and I have more women working side by side with us. We need to envision that day. We need to envision that day when women will outnumber the men in the room, not just at events like this, but in our meeting rooms and in our labs and in our boardrooms. Now that is sticking a thumb in the eye of the status quo. So with the introduction of 5G technology, we have officially launched the invention revolution, as you saw in the video. This means we need many, many more inventors. We especially need more women inventors and underrepresented minorities of all genders, ages, and background to make the promise of 5G technology and interconnecting our worlds become a reality. And you know what else it'll do? It'll give us better inventions and better products and better services and really have a better world. So let me take a minute to acknowledge the scholarship winners here tonight. Congratulations on your amazing accomplishments. At your table, we've provided each of you with a small gift to take with you on your journey. Please feel free to open them now. Each of you has a new Fitbit Alta. <clears throat> Use this device as a reminder to prioritize your health while you're working hard at your, at your education goals. And I also want to give you a little bit of advice. Not that you need it. You guys seem to be doing pretty well on your own. But I, I don't want you to focus as much on what degree you want. I want you to think about the problems that you actually want to solve in the world. That passion that you will have in pursuing those solutions to those problems will guide you to the right degree 
and the right career. And well, I'll throw a little shameless plug. Don't forget about this wonderful company called Qualcomm. Right here in your hometown, we'll be waiting for you with internships and great jobs. Seriously, call me. Those devices you have, they actually can call people. Ask your parents. And now I'd like to just acknowledge the Pinnacle Award nominees. You represent the best and the brightest men and women here in San Diego. Congratulations on your nominations and your outstanding accomplishments. This group is beyond impressive. You are the renegades, the inventors, the rebels, the insurgents, the entrepreneurs that our video highlights, and your time is now. When STEM leaders come together, men and women, when science, technology, engineering, and the services that support us come together, and when the educators in these disciplines continue to give our youth the tools and encouragement to create the next big thing, we will change the world. And at Qualcomm, we look forward to continuing our work with Athena and with all of you to make this world a finer and more excellent place. So buckle your seatbelts. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome KPBS education reporter, Megan Burks. Good evening. Thank you. As education reporter at KPBS, I'm especially thrilled to be asked to MC for the Pinnacle Scholarship Awards. A lot of people ask me what is the best part of my job, and it's that it takes me up and down the county for one-on-ones with such inspiring people. I find myself sitting across from entrepreneurs, from leaders, and from parents who sacrifice everything to foster the next entrepreneurs and leaders. So what a joy it is to be your MC tonight. It's the best part of my job on overdrive. I mean, this room, wall-to-wall -wall inspiring people. And talk about inspiring. We're about to introduce you to our Pinnacle Scholarship Award winners. These five young women, if they aren't already, are gonna be sitting down with journalists all over the world to talk about the next big breakthrough or how they're meeting our biggest challenges. Selected out of 120 applicants, they come from all corners of the county and they're ready to take your industries by storm. Now, before you fire up your LinkedIn accounts, accounts and try to snag these ladies from other employers, please join me in welcoming Sean Duffy, Senior Vice President and Chief Financial Officer for Viasat. Sean is a passionate leader and advocate for corporate involvement in the education, guidance, and sponsorship of our younger generation, especially in the growing technology fields. Let's welcome Sean Duffy. I'm Sean Duffy, CFO at Biasat. Really honored to be here with all of you. As a global communications and technology company, Biasat is focused on connecting the world. We're dedicated to doing what others really view as impossible. From delivering the fastest internet to planes moving at 600 miles per hour, to bringing the digital divide by providing high quality broadband to the world, all over the world, even third world countries. We do this by bringing together the best and the brightest minds from around the world to work together on developing technologies that address global broadband challenges and ensure a better way that our customers can stay connected, even in the hardest, most remote places. We believe innovation doesn't happen in a vacuum. It doesn't happen in a lab. It comes from sharing experiences, exploring ideas from multiple perspectives, and combining technologies to create something that's new, something that's different, something that is better. That is why it's so critical to give our next generation of innovators the education, the support, the tools they need to be, lead us into the future. Tonight, we're really excited to be a partner with Athena in the investment and recognition of our future leaders in STEM through this scholarship. At Viasat, we take a hands-on approach to developing young talent. 
We bring students onto our campus for tours, engage with them in a variety of STEM activities, and offer them one-on-one -on -one interactions with our engineers that are the same ones that are solving some of the world's toughest communication problems. We also partner with educational and industry organizations just like Athena. We um, provide opportunities that will aid the new generation of aspiring STEM leaders. So driven by our company culture at Biasat, we really want to encourage more students to be curious, fearless in their approach to solving the unknown, driven by their own passions to work on hard, life-changing problems. By providing scholarships to young women with an interest and talent in pursuing careers in STEM, we're helping to ensure the future success of our country's technology leadership and our ability to make a real impact on the global community. Now, we all know the power and value of Pay It Forward. So tonight, we wanted to pay forward the educational support of these amazing young women. And we also wanted to give each of them the opportunity to give a small education project that's close and dear to their hearts with a Pay It Forward $100 donor's choice gift card. The young women we're recognizing tonight represent tomorrow's leaders. They have a passion and a vision to see what we can't even imagine today. And we truly congratulate them and honor them this evening. Thanks. So each year, Athena raises funds and awards scholarships to five promising young women who have their sights set on careers in STEM. The scholarships awarded by Athena are merit-based, and this year's five winners were selected from more than 120 scholarship applications from schools across San Diego County. The scholarships are funded by proceeds from tonight's silent auction and Raise the Paddle, as well as year-round donations made to the scholarship fund. So let's go ahead and meet our 2017 Pinnacle Scholarship winners. Our first winner is Kiara Bacassin. Kiara. With a rank of five out of 569 students in her senior class, Kiara Bacassin. Bacassin is considered one of Otay Ranch High School's academic leaders. She is the first student at her school to be accepted into the prestigious San Diego Life Sciences Summer Institute Student Research Program, where she gained valuable lab experience in the ophthalmology department at UC San Diego. Kiara is currently working with Dr. Laura Isabel McCall as she pursues her interest in parasitic infection and the hygiene hypothesis. She also volunteers with Sharp Chola Vista and Corpus Christi Youth Leadership. She has applied to Stanford, MIT, UCLA, and other schools that were, will allow her to pursue a highly impactful career in mathematics and the sciences. Next, please join me in welcoming Liana Merck. Our next scholarship winner is Liana Merck from Canyon Crest Academy. Liana believes in giving back to the community and is already a prolific volunteer. She has volunteered her time and talents for the past six years in the National Charity League and a host of other nonprofit organizations, including the San Diego Library, the Helen Woodward Animal Shelter, Salk's Education Outreach, and San Diego Feeding America. Her love of the STEM disciplines led to a paid internship as part of the Life Sciences Summer Institute, specifically working for the Laboratory for Gene Expression. In the lab, she extracted RNA, quantified lipoproteins, determined a cell's transcripto transcriptome, and calculated the exact amount of cholesterol that resides in the arteries of an arthrosclerosis patient. Liana researched other types of science and began working with the NOMIS Center for Immunobiology and Microbial Pathogenesis. And she hopes to attend California Institute of Technology, John Hopkins University, or Berkeley, where she is being considered for the Regents Scholarship Program. Our next scholarship winner, <laughs> Maylin Shi. Welcome, Maylin. Mm -hmm. 
Malin discovered a love of science at Westview High School, but she has a creative side too. She plays the violin and the piano. She loves to ponder philosophical questions and read literature with beautiful prose. Her diverse interests have led her to equally diverse activities. She is the editor-in-chief uh, for Westview's national award-winning newspaper, president of Westview's Advocates for a Better Environment, a varsity competitor for the Speech and Debate Club, and participates in the school's peer consulting group. In addition, she founded Poway Unified School District's Food Recovery Program. She has interned at Dr. Hemel Patel's Cardiac Neuro Neuroprotection Lab at UC San Diego VA Hospital. She also interns at the Palomar Medical Center where she, involved, she is involved in the diagnoses of patients with obesity, high blood pressure, and high blood sugar. She's applied to top schools on both coasts. And we're... And we're pleased to uh, introduce our next winner, Tammy Trong. Tammy Trong is a senior, senior at Vista High School and is determined to pursue her dream of a career in the medical field. In the summer of 2015, she attended a summer medical camp at UC San Diego called Camp Cardiac. A year later, she attended the Summer Medical Academy at Rady Children's, where she learned about various branches of medicine, such as pediatrics, surgery, and pharmacy. Today, she volunteers at Tri-City Hospital. Tammy pays it forward by teaching character leadership to elementary students. She also participates in key club service events and organizes events at Oceanside Parks and Recreation. Tammy expresses her creative side by composing music and playing the piano and dancing in Vietnamese cultural performances. She also enjoys hiking and camping. When Tammy finishes college at either UCLA or Boston University, she'll be the first generation in her family to earn a college degree. And last, but certainly, certainly not least, is our next winner, Jessica Shu. Welcome, Jessica. Jessica Shu from Maranthana Christian Schools has always been intrigued by how things work. Since her freshman year in high school, Jessica has been actively involved in designing and building experimental modules sent to the International Space Station, a rare opportunity that exists in only a small number of high schools around the world. Jessica has worked on two modules that have traveled to space and back, and now she's the project manager of the San Diego Youth Space Program, and she's leading a team for a module assigned to NASA's SpaceX 11. The module will run aboard the International Space Station for 30 days, investigating the phototropic response of garden crests in microgravity. Jessica also founded her high school's newspaper and earned National Honor Society recognition during 11th and 12th grade. She volunteers as a camp buddy for special needs children and teaches children in Sunday school. Jessica is pursuing a degree in biomedical engineering at UC San Diego, UC Berkeley, USC, MIT, Duke, Vanderbilt, or Washington University in St. Louis. So you're working with a researcher at the SCAD School of Pharmacy and you're interested in parasites. Can you tell me about that? Okay, so that program is basically um, the mentorship assistance program at UCSD. And uh, I got the choice of working with any of the uh, doc any of the researchers there, and I chose parasites because I'd always been interested in disease, and um, parasites seemed like a really cool way to go into it. And um, yeah, I'm working with Dr. Uh, Laura Isabel McCall, and because I wanted to know, I just like I said, I was interested in re parasites, and eventually I got into um, I got into parasites in medicine. Yeah, what is the, the hygiene hypothesis and, and why parasites? So the hygiene hypothesis goes that uh, we as a developed society are too clean, that we are, we are um, 
creating our immune systems to be overreactive and to the point that they attack us. So the hygiene hypothesis states that perhaps that we shouldn't be so antibacterial all the time because there are some bacteria that helps us. Just like there are some parasites that also help in immunoregulation. immunoregulation. And you're thinking that this might be a way to actually cut down on the cost of drugs, is that right? Yes, so I know it sounds strange. Parasites come with a, a bad connotation, you just think disease, but we, these parasites that I'm talking about are ones that we've evolved with throughout our entire evolutionary history. And studies have proven that the effect they have on us can keep our immune systems from attacking ourselves. And specifically, I'm working with multiple scler sclerosis because that's a disease that actually has your immune systems attack your own um, brain cells. And the way the parasites would work is that they would modulate that uh, kind of reaction and stop that, that attack that leaves your brain scarred and um, can eventually lead to, unfortunately, death because of the progression of the disease. So you're interested in making an impact, lowering the cost of drugs, improving um, treatment for folks. What are your plans next to kind of get you toward that goal? Where are you going to school? What are you going to study? Um, I'm going to Stanford University. <laughs> yes. And yes, I do plan to pursue quite a number of um, research, including this, including what I just mentioned, um, creating more responsible medicine that can be available to more people because as we know, uh, medicine is becoming much more expensive, more, techno more technology is going into them. So I think we need to explore alternative routes as well to give a responsible alternative to the people who perhaps can't afford um, technology-based medicine. And not just medicine, but I'm also interested in uh, responsibility and other aspects in our society, such as uh, sustainable energy, sustainable material. I want to work in many different fields, and I think at Stanford University, I'll be able to adequately explore all those things. It's clear that you really care about your world and the people in it, and I can't help but think that some of that comes from your parents. Can you just briefly tell me a little bit about your parents? Uh, yes, so my parents were not born here and neither were I, was I. They were born in Philippines along with me and uh, three out of five of my siblings. And at 26, they worked extremely hard to take me and my, at the time, it was just me and my two sisters and themselves across seas all the way to America because we wanted a place where we knew we would have the opportunity to thrive. And thankfully, me and my siblings have taken that opportunity. And because of their hard work, uh, my mom taking two jobs, my dad uh, working, like, I can't even describe it, but having those role models to watch and see, it made us know that they're, that Hard work is a part of life, and that we can't just throw their hard work away. Where are they at? Can you point them out? At table 12? Hi. <laughs> Thank you, Kiara. Thank you. Hi, Liana. Hi. So can you tell us a little bit about your plans for college? And you plan to major in bioengineering, is that right? Yeah. So this fall, I'll be attending the California Institute of Technology in Pasadena. And, um, I will be studying bioengineering, hopefully um, planning on going to a PhD after. What is it about bioengineering that you like? I think there are so many different pathways of bioengineering that um, we're still just learning how to use these different tools like um, gene editing tools, so right now I'm actually starting to do some work with CRISPR, and I think it's absolutely fascinating. And um, I think bioengineering is kind of the best way to solve all of our problems in the future. So. And at Salk, you also help younger children with science fair projects, is that right? Yeah. What kind of advice do you give them, especially the girls that you work with? Yeah, so I mentor three girls with science fair projects right now, and I started doing science fair two years ago. And um, the first lab I worked in was actually predominantly male, and 
um, I realized that I wanted to have a female scientist to look, to look up to as well. And the lab I work in now, um, Dr. Janelle Ayers, is actually 10 female scientists. And um, it's an awesome environment to be in, yeah. <laughs> And so, so the girls, you tell them to find those, those role models, right? Yeah, I think it's really important for girls growing up to not only um, find mentors and find people to look up to, but also find a strong female person in your life that you um, can definitely connect with and be able to talk to not only about science, but about everything. Thank you. Diana Merck. Hi, Malin. So you are intern you interned at the at a lab at the UCSD VA, VA hospital and you say that Wednesdays there were your favorite. Can you tell me why that is? Yeah, Wednesdays were our morning lab meetings and we held them every week. And my first labbing was really overwhelming just because of all the terms and all the all the stuff that was thrown around. But I really grew to love those Wednesday morning lab meetings because that was where we had those discussions where it wasn't just us trying to experiment and conduct experiments, but us trying to raise new questions, um, find some of those holes in experience and ask new, see those experiments and procedures from different perspectives. And it was those meetings that showed me how creative science was and how it wasn't just this linear process from hypotheses to conclusion, but hypotheses to conclusion to more hypotheses and this really circular, innovative cycle. And you bring a lot of different perspectives to the perspectives to the table. Um, you play violin, you are the editor of your school newspaper. Do you think that that makes you a better scientist? Definitely. Um, humanities, literature, writing, all of those have all helped me see the world in really different ways. Especially journalism, my favorite things to do in newspaper is write, do investigative journalistic pieces. And that has so many parallels with science and research because we're always trying to raise ask those questions and see things from different ways. And there are so many different parallels, mostly because it teaches you to think in different ways. And can you tell us about where you're headed next year and what you're gonna be studying? I'm going to Northwestern University. Um, <laughs> I'll be part of the honors program in medical education, which is a BSMD direct med program. So I'll be pursuing medicine. Um, and I'll be doing a lot of research, um, public service, and I really want to get more involved in health policy to, um, to focus on medicine on a much larger scale. And at the same time, because I'll have a lot more flexibility, I'm hoping to study philosophy or something humanities related and, like I said, get that different perspective. I think they're laughing because they think he'll be busy, but I think he can handle it. <laughs> Thank you, Malin. And Tammy, thank you. Um, so can you tell me why you're interested in medicine and pediatrics in particular? Yeah, definitely. So I always, I've always wanted to be a part of the medical field, but I didn't know really what to do until um, two years ago when I was involved in the Camp Cardiac program and the Summer Medical Academy at UCSD. And that's really what kind of sparked my interest even more in medicine and specifically working with kids at my local elementary school. Um, I teach kids um, character leaders, which is a class at my high school that we've expanded. And it um, empowers students to learn more about leadership, character, and community service and the importance of that. And so after two and a half years working with them, I've like, I've gained this like um, discovery that I love working with children and I want to continue that in the future. What is it about kids? Why do you like working with them? I like working with kids because they're just so unpredictable and they, <laughs> they inspire me to be a better person and they're just so full of life and they're just so creative and yeah. <laughs> um, and we were talking about you going on into medicine. Where are you going to be studying? I'm going to be studying at UC Davis, um, studying neurobiology, physiology, and behavior. And I want to learn more about um, environmental science and, yeah. <laughs> and um, your parents also came here as immigrants. Uh, what's one lesson that you've really taken away from them? Well, I've learned that, that they've, um, they've sacrificed so much. They've, can't, they've come here with not a lot and they've started a whole new life and they've gone through so many tribulations and 
um, working multiple jobs just to create this better life for me and my sister. And so what I've learned from them is that you have to work really hard to get where you want to be and to never just never stop and keep going. Thank you. And Jessica. So you're launching something into space soon. Yes. Um, so I'm super thrilled and grateful to have this opportunity. Um, I'm involved in this team of currently about 20 high school students from seven local high schools. And I lead the team to create a module about the size of your palm. And it will run in the, on the International Space Station for 30 days. When is it launching? Um, NASA has assigned us a SpaceX 11 launch, which is currently scheduled to launch May 31st. So we're all counting down the days. <laughs> so this is not your first rodeo when it comes to sending things in space. <laughs> Do these modules like look or like can you tell that they've been in space? Um, well, they come with like a wrapping that they put around them. But um, other than that, it's just really cool to know that something we worked on has been in space and um, we all like to get together and watch the live stream of the launch and it's really exciting to see all our hard work over the past year pay off. And you're also an artist. Um, can you tell us a little bit about sort of how you see the intersection of art and science? Yeah, so um, I've always been interested in both art and science. Um, and in high school, I realized that they're not necessarily have to be that separate. Um, I've realized that um, putting them together um, can create some really interesting things, um, give you a different mindset. Uh, for example, last year I created a series of 12 artworks titled Biomimicry. So each of the 12 pieces um, depicted a different scientific innovation that was created by looking at nature. So for example, um, a more efficient, faster bullet train inspired by the kingfisher's beak. Um, the kingfisher bird can go from air to water without making a splash. So um, I drew the train and the uh, bird layered together to um, express that innovation. And um, I've seen in my high school, there's not that many girls who are interested in STEM. Um, my school is pretty small, but um, I just wanted to use that series of artworks to try to overcome the barrier between science and the general public and just really share my love for science and engineering. And real quick, can you tell us where you're headed next year and what you'll be studying? Um, I will be attending MIT to study bioengineering. Thank you. Go ahead and sit tight. We have a surprise for you guys. So before we let these truly wonderful ladies go, we have one more surprise. Please welcome our partner from Sony, Julie Wenzel, Senior Manager, Community Relations, here to present some very special gifts from Sony. Thank you, Megan. I'm so excited to be here tonight with uh, all of you to honor and recognize these incredible scholarship recipients. At Sony, our mission is to be a company that inspires and fulfills your curiosity. Our unlimited passion for advancing technology, content, and services, to deliver, it drives us to deliver groundbreaking and exciting entertainment solutions like only Sony can. Innovation at Sony starts with our talented employees. We have an environment that fosters development and mentoring, and we proudly partner with organizations like Athena that promote professional growth for women in STEM and related industries. We are especially honored to support these young women as they prepare to embark on their own STEM careers. We have supported Athena's Pinnacle Scholarships for many years, and Sony believes it's important to nurture new talent, both inside and outside of the company. Each year, we like to send our scholarship recipients off to college with a special gift from Sony. So this year, we are happy to present you with our MDR-1000X, their wireless, noise-canceling, high-res audio headphones, and an XB3 portable wireless Bluetooth speaker. 
So congratulations. We all wish you all the best as you embark on your exciting futures. Thank you. I'd like to segue to an amazing organization here in town and an equally beautiful lady leading that organization, Ms. Corrine Ayler, who is a senior director at Asset Services at Alexandria Real Estate Equities. And Alexandria is the place where work intersects with life. Oh, Corrine, you gotta tell us more about that. Come on out. Thank you, Cheryl. At Alexandria, we like to think of ourselves as champions of change, as we work with startups and innovators in the life science and technology industries. But last night at dinner, I met a real champion of change, our keynote speaker, Haben Gurma. Powerful stories can help to drive success. Compelling stories communicate what sets an organization or individual apart and how that difference can serve as an advantage. Haben Gurma is a talented storyteller who helps to frame difference as an asset. Born deaf blind, Haben fought off low expectations, choosing to create her own pioneering story rooted in her belief that inclusion is a choice. She is the first deaf-blind person to graduate from Harvard Law School. And she also holds a bachelor's degree in sociology and anthropology from Lewis and Clark College. She developed a powerful path to success by mastering self-advocacy and furthered those skills through legal advocacy. Because of her disability rights advocacy, Haben has earned international acclaim and has been honored as a White House champion of change by President Barack Obama and President Bill Clinton, among others. <laughs> Haben has been featured extensively in media around the world, including the BBC, NBC, NPR, and earning recognition as Forbes 30 Under 40 and BBC Women of Africa Hero. Ladies and gentlemen, please bring a warm welcome to Haben Gurma. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for Corinne for that great introduction. As Corinne told you, I'm deaf blind. So I can't see that there are people in the audience. And I can't hear a lot of the auditory feedback. So what I'm doing, I have a braille display and digital braille pops up at the bottom. And my interpreter, April, is sitting with a wireless keyboard. So she's gonna be watching and listening and typing. And I'm gonna read audience feedback. So if people are smiling, laughing, engaged, she's gonna type and tell me. She says you're clapping. <laughs> but she'll also tell me if people look bored. My name is Haven Grima, and the name Haven comes from Eritrea. It's a small African country. Ethiopia borders to the south, and to the north is the Red Sea. My mother grew up in Eritrea during the war between Eritrea and Ethiopia. There was a lot of violence in the streets. Fear spilled into the classroom as well. 
Stories were a way to escape the violence and fear. Stories are powerful. Stories influence the organizations we build, the products we design, and the futures we imagine for ourselves. My mother heard stories that told her America is the land of freedom. America is the land of opportunities. Inspired by these stories, she took the difficult journey walking from Eritrea to Sudan. She spent several months in Sudan as a refugee, and a refugee organization helped her come to the United States. Several years later, older, wiser, my mother realized geography doesn't create justice. People create justice. Communities create justice. All of us face the choice to accept the oppression around us or advocate for justice. As the daughter of refugees, a black woman, disabled, stories sometimes say my life doesn't matter. I choose to create my own stories. I choose to believe that difference is an asset. And I found ways to access information and not let disability or difference be a barrier. Deaf blindness is a spectrum of limited vision and hearing. I found alternative solutions for just about everything. For example, Braille. I read all my books in Braille. If something, if, if something is in print, I could find ways to get that converted to Braille so that I can read it. I use computers with screen readers Screen readers are software that converts graphical information to speech or digital braille. I travel around with a guide dog. Her name is Maxine, and she's trained to navigate around obstacles, stairs, cars. I can also use a white cane. I received training with a white cane. I salsa dance. I can't hear the music, but I can feel the rhythm and musicality through the people I dance with. There's always a way to do something. We just need to find those alternative solutions to access information. One of my first days in law school, the classmates sitting next to me couldn't figure out how to say hi to me. She waved but I couldn't see it. She voiced hi, but I couldn't hear it. It was our first day of international law, and she wasn't thinking about international law. She was thinking about how to get my attention. So as a student, she did the most logical thing for a student. She went onto Facebook and sent me a message saying, hi, Havin, I'm sitting right next to you. I don't know about you, but I actually don't use Facebook in class. <laughs> After class, I saw the message and I reached out to her. I explained that I use a braille display and keyboard and she's welcome to type on the keyboard and I'll be able to read what she's writing. When people first meet me, the first question is usually, how do you communicate? The second question is usually, have you heard of Helen Keller? <laughs> yes, actually. <laughs> Helen Keller was an amazing deaf-blind woman. She lived from 1880 to 1968. She spent her whole life advocating for women's rights, 
racial equality, disability rights. She dedicated her life to social justice. Yet people often just reduce her to one thing, a deaf blind woman who learned to say the word water. There's so much more to people with disabilities. There's a lot of diversity within our community. It's important to know that disability is never the barrier. I use the word disability. I identify as a person with a disability. The word isn't the problem. It's the attitudes and stigma that's the problem. So it's okay to continue using the words, but just change the attitudes associated with the words. When Helen was looking for college to attend, Harvard wouldn't admit her. Back then, Harvard was only for men. Her disability didn't hold her back. She was brilliant and hardworking. Her gender didn't hold her back. Women are brilliant and hardworking. It was the community at Harvard that chose to practice exclusion. As another example, Helen's community wouldn't allow her to experience marriage. Helen fell in love, secretly got engaged, but her family prevented her from marrying the person she loved. Helen's disability didn't stop her from feeling love. She wrote extensively about love, but her family, her community, created insurmountable barriers. All the barriers that exist are created by people. And it's up to all of us to work together to remove those barriers. When I was in college, I thought about what can I do as an individual to remove the barriers in my community. I went to Lewis and Clark College. It's a small college in Portland, Oregon. The cafeteria served as a fun place for people to relax between classes. It's a large room, the cafeteria. Along three of the walls are large windows showcasing Portland's rain. <laughs> On the fourth wall were food stations, and people would walk in, browse the print menu, and then go to their station of choice. The print menu is not accessible to blind students like myself. Blindness was not the problem. I can access information if it's in Braille. So it was the menu that was the problem, not the disability. I went to the cafeteria manager and explained, this menu isn't accessible. Can you provide the menu in Braille? Or can you email it so I can read it with a screen reader? And the manager told me they're very busy I need to stop complaining and be more appreciative. <laughs> but if there's chocolate cake at station four and no one tells me, <laughs> I'm not feeling appreciative. <laughs> I have really good navigation skills with a guide dog or white cane, I can navigate the campus independently. I can navigate that cafeteria independently. So if they gave me a menu that said station one, hamburgers, station two, tortellini with smoked gouda cheese, I could know to skip station one and go straight to station two. <laughs> but they didn't provide me the information. Back then, I was practicing, I was eating vegetarian. And that's hard to do when you don't have access to food information. For the first few months, I tolerated the situation. I told myself, at least I have food. Many people around the world don't have access to food. So who am I to complain? My mother spent many months in Sudan as a refugee. And there I was in Portland, getting an education. Who was I to complain? I was worried that maybe I should just shut up and put up with the situation. And I talked to my friends, and I told them, I don't have access to the food information. 
should I do something or should I just put up with the situation? And they told me, it's my choice. It's our choice to advocate for ourselves or put up with oppression. In 1990, Congress passed the Americans with Disabilities Act. The ADA prohibits discrimination against people with disabilities. Places of public accommodation, like schools, cafeterias, are required by law to accommodate individuals with disabilities. I wrote a letter to the cafeteria manager explaining about the Americans with Disabilities Act. Accommodations for blind students includes providing access to the menu. And if they wouldn't provide me access, then I would sue. <laughs> I had no idea how I would do that. I was 19. I couldn't afford a lawyer. But I knew that if we're determined, we'll find a way. My mom found a way to greater opportunities. The whole world, and even the United States, was a big unknown to her, yet she made the journey. So I needed to make my own journey and find a way to advocate for myself. And I did. After teaching the cafeteria about the ADA, everything changed. They realized that I wasn't asking for favors. I was asking them to comply with the law. And it changed the culture at the cafeteria. They started providing menus in accessible formats. For me, life became delicious. The following year, another blind student came to that college, and he had immediate access to the cafeteria menu. He didn't have to fight, he didn't have to advocate. And I realized that when I make changes in our community, it benefits other people. It's not just about me, it's about our whole community. And that experience inspired me to become a disability rights lawyer and go to law school. In 2010, in 2010, I entered Harvard Law School. Harvard told me, we've never had a deaf blind student before. And I told Harvard, I've never been to Harvard Law School before. <laughs> we didn't have all the answers but we pioneered our way using assistive technology and high expectations. You can always find solutions. There's always an alternative way to access information. I now work as a disability rights lawyer, traveling around the world, teaching people about our rights, inclusion, and all the different ways we can reach our dreams. People with disabilities are the largest minority group. Around the world, there are 1.3 billion people with disabilities. This is a huge market. Companies who make their services accessible benefit by reaching more people. Disability also drives innovation. Accessibility features end up benefiting the whole community. Curb cuts were built to help people with wheelchairs get on and off the sidewalks. Now parents pushing strollers, travelers with luggage on wheels, skateboarders, all of these different groups benefit from curb cuts. Captions on videos allows deaf individuals to access the audio content on videos. It also benefits hearing people. Facebook reports that videos with caption have a higher view time. View time increases by 12% when captions are included. So as you go through your careers, in school, 
your future companies, think about inclusion. Think about making your services accessible. It'll benefit you, increase growth, and drive innovation. All of you have strengths and talents. It's up to you to choose to believe in yourself, to choose that you're worth it, and find those solutions that'll allow you to reach your dream. Thank you for being here with me, and I hope you'll join me in making our world more inclusive for everyone. Wow, what an amazing woman. Obviously, she's a force on her own, but look at what happens when science and technology intersect. And when someone as amazing as Haben has the resiliency to rise above and embrace what makes each of us different. A voice is heard, a room is moved, a world is changed. That's what tonight is all about. The Pinnacle Awards are not only about recognizing great individuals among us, it's about recognizing what happens when we support each other. There's a common rallying cry in the fight for gender equality. Women must lift each other up and not tear each other down. <laughs> when women in lab coats and goggles take that to heart, not only do we get equality, we get innovation. Tonight, we honor seven individuals and businesses in the life sciences, technology, service, and education who have taken that to heart. They are among 95 nominees, a new record for Athena. So, without, without further ado, please join me in welcoming Vicki Mueller Burke of Qualcomm back to the stage. Qualcomm is honored to present this particular category since we are deeply committed to the convergence of life sciences and technology to solve healthcare's most challenging issues yet, unlocking the value of medical device data across the care continuum. Our open enterprise grade infrastructure connects to one of the world's largest healthcare ecosystems to help inform medical decisions and make intelligent healthcare an anywhere, anytime reality. The individuals in the life science category represent healthcare, pharmaceutical, medical device, wireless health, diagnostics, therapeutics, genomics, and more. They're impacting technology and scientific advancement while also paving the way for women within their industry company or organization. Here are the nominees for the outstanding individual in life sciences. Denise Bevers, Nicole Bormanov, Natasha Bowman, Brooke Emerlin, Diane Goostry, Troy Hops, Shashita Enamdal, Sabrina Johnson, Ida Hodan. Pentea Hodan, Lang Rickers, Lucy Sue, Dina Uzri, Ashley Van Zeelen, Stephanie Van Watson, Kim Walpole, Christina Waters, and Evie Wilpen Schwartz. Okay, I'm trying not to have a La La Land moment here. Um, and the winner is Sabrina Johnson. CEO and CFO, Bi Bayer Bioscience, California Institute for Biomedical Research. Come on up. Is the CEO 
of DARE Bioscience and the CFO for the California Institute for Biomedical Research. Currently serving on the Athena Board of Directors, Vice Chair Sabrina Johnson has long been a role model for women, both in the workplace and through formal mentoring. In her dual roles as CEO of DARE Bioscience and CFO at the California Institute for Biomedical Research, Don Johnson is an advocate for women in leadership roles. 60% of her staff are women at Caliper. 75% of her direct reports are women. Johnson focuses on helping those she mentors achieve their corporate objectives while maintaining a healthy life-work balance. She demonstrates daily that women can rise to the highest levels of an organization while being thoughtful, respectful leaders with an eye toward helping her peers advance. Sabrina is an active volunteer serving in leadership for six organizations with a focus on those helping women achieve economic self-sufficiency as well as those supporting STEM education. Um, thank you, that is totally humbling um, to be up here after those incredible young high school girls and our incredible speaker. Um, so I'm just really honored and um, they're who motivate me to give back in the community and be the best that I can be. And it's been an incredible year for Dare, so it's also super fun and special to win tonight. So thank you. Hello. At Sony, we embrace the entrepreneurial spirit. So it is our pleasure to introduce Startups in Biotech. To qualify for this award, these businesses have been in business for five or fewer years. Each has illustrated a trajectory of growth and industry influence. They can be privately or VC funded. The companies that qualified for this category are... Elastin Skincare, Arista MD, Dare Bioscience, Immuno Activa, Proderm IQ, and Trials.ai. And the Pinnacle Award winner for Biotech Startup of the Year goes to Arista MD. Arista MD CEO Rebecca Kofinas has worked in the healthcare industry for 20 years. During her tenure with Scripps, she noticed the inefficiencies in handling referrals and set out to find a solution to remedy the problem. In 2014, Arista MD, a digital health company focused on improving the specialty referral process, was born. Designed by physicians, the Arista MD platform combines clinical guidelines, special e-consults, and operational insights into an easy-to-use platform. Kofinas has dedicated her career to supporting, encouraging, and mentoring women, emphasizing the necessity of starting early in their careers. During her two decades of experience, Kofinas has filled more than 50% of open leadership positions with women. Currently, the key executive team at Arista MD is 60% female-led. Thank you. Thank you so much. Rebecca is actually not able to be here tonight, but I'm accepting for her. Thank you for that background. Um, I know she was here. She would say, we're so honored. The whole company is very honored to be included in this list of really innovative companies and incredible leaders. Um, it's fantastic. Uh, Rebecca started Arista MD after spending almost 20 years on the provider side of healthcare delivery where she recognized that there were huge inefficiencies that were costing billions of dollars and resulting in suboptimal patient care. And she wanted to change that. Um, so three years ago, she started Arista. And right now, we were just squarely focused on reducing care inefficiencies and on delivering access to specialty care for those who need it. We're really proud to say that today, 90% of our client base uh, being served is the underserved population. Yeah. I'd say that today, like literally today, that has never been more relevant and more important. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. um, So I get to do the educator category. The individuals in this category are providing the platform for others to achieve new heights in STEM. They're public and 
private educators that are promoting and developing programs focused in math and science. They're innovating and reshaping how we prepare the next generation for careers in math, science, and technology. They're inspiring our young women. And those of us who have children, myself, a daughter, that's very important. They want these women to enter STEM fields. They want to pave the way for diversity in these critical disciplines. So the nominees for Pinnacle's Outstanding Educator are... Nicole Assisi, Susan Baxter, Regina Bernal, Cora Carmody, Pamela Cosman, Kimberly King, Linda Travis McComber, Alexei Prohorov, Nancy Swanberg, Jeanette Williams, and Jeff Winkler. And the pinnacle winner for her essential work in education is Pamela Cosman. Cosman, PhD, has an impressive list of titles, Associate Dean for Students at UC San Diego Jacobs School of Engine Engineering, Vice Chair, Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering, and Co-Director of UC San Diego Center for Research on Gender in Science, Technology, Engineering, Mathematics, and Medicine. Dr. Pamela Cosman works to create more equitable and productive workplaces. As faculty equity advisor, she conducts annual trainings on unconscious bias for all faculty search committee committees in the school. Each year, she chairs the Excellence Search Committee, which conducts a competition for candidates active in diversity and outreach. Dr. Cosman also serves on the internal advisory board of the Create STEM Success Ini Initiative. This multi-year initiative connects researchers from UC San Diego's Center for Research on Education educational equity assessment and teaching excellence with regional K-12 educators to boost computer science education in underserved schools. She was recently awarded a competitive grant of $511,000 from the state of California for advancing faculty diversity in the Jacobs School of Engineering and was named a UC San Diego 2016 diversity champion. Cosman has also authored a children's book which she teaches concepts of wireless communications. Thank you. I am very honored and I have to say very surprised to have been chosen for this among such a, a wonderful, amazing set of women. And I also wanted to say with the fact that I grew up with three older brothers and I have like 50 male colleagues in my department. And I also have a, well, a wonderful husband and I have four children who are all male. So <laughs> taking all this into account, I have to say, the girl power in this room is just amazing. Thanks. Those of us in science, technology, engineering, and math fields know that we could not perform our work without the people who support us with services like finance, law, insurance, marketing, and more. They provide the expertise to get our, our ideas patented, our companies funded, our employees paid, and ensure our people and businesses to make sure we can weather the challenges that come our way. And they represent talented, intelligent female leadership across multiple industries. The 2017 Outstanding Women in Services are... Beth Branning, <coughs> Michelle Comtois, Lynn Folks, Nancy Hong, Vivian Lin, Allison Long Patine, Kelly McCauley, Kimberly Miller, Marcy Morrison, Heather Mueller, Maggie Osborne, Denise Parati Hummel, Theodora Purcell, Amanda Scott, Stephanie Seidman, Jody Smith, Colleen Smith, Diane West and Monique Williamson. And the winner for Outstanding Individual in Service is 
Nancy Hong, PhD, Managing Director, Rivervest Ventures Partners. Female venture investors are rare but important to closing the gender gap in the biotech and technology industries. Dr. Nancy Hong is among the few women who joined their ranks when she successfully transitioned from a biology postdoctoral researcher to venture-backed biotech startup scientist to venture capital investor. Nancy joined Rivervest Venture Partners, a top performing, performing life science venture capital firm, as managing director in 2016. She aims to help startup funders and scientists find their place and maximize their impact in the healthcare arena. She has a particular interest in the success of women. Hong is an active member of San Diego's biotech scene, serving as a board member to the nonprofit BioLaunch, promoting the Salk Women in Science program, and acting as a panelist at the many biotech events. She is a strong supporter of the extremely talented women in her field, advocating for their involvement and advancement, and mentoring them by sharing her experiences and opinions. Uh, thank you so much. This is such an honor. Um, what an amazing evening. So many inspiring women, so many inspiring young ladies. Um, it's terrific to be um, one of the community members here in San Diego. Um, we have such a great community here, uh, such strong women, such supportive men. Um, it's a really wonderful, wonderful city, and I'm really proud to be a member of it. Thanks so much. <laughs> Good evening. We are so excited to present the Pinnacle Award for Individual in Technology. This category is right in our wheelhouse. At Desca, we support entrepreneurs and, tech and technology startups throughout San Diego. We understand firsthand that in order to make and move technology, it takes collaboration. We don't just talk about collaboration, we live it. We engage our entrepreneurs and clients with businesses and community individuals through introductions, programs, office resources, entertainment, and philanthropy. To qualify for the pinnacle individual achievement in technology, these professionals are making significant contributions in advancing technologies, such as wireless, software, e-commerce, clean tech, defense, energy, ener engineering, entertainment, gaming, and well, you get the idea. The 2017 Pinnacle Techstar nominees are Michiko Araki, Susie Armstrong, Sherry Bonner, Erica Burroughs, Jay Connolly LaBelle, Kelly Carruthers, Joy Kurth, Melissa DeVita, Kristen Elliott, Candace Gallahue, Mary Gendron. Benita Kumar, Maggie Lowe, Jan Marshall, Iris Miao, Susan Miller, Alicia Monroe, Ali Najib, Sue Kralazny, Leslie Prasciutti, Nithya Ramanathan, Kristen Slink, and Nina Smith. technology is Nina Smith. serves as a role model for every member of her 577 person team as well as for Mitchell at large. CSG is Mitchell's largest business entity in 2016 and accounted for 49% of the company's total revenue. Smith credits her high performing team's success to diversity of background, education, and ideation. Her commitment to diversity is reflected in the, the composition of her workplace. 44% of her senior leadership team and 66% of her overall staff are female. Smith's early career was spent at Xerox, where she was active in the company's diversity programs. In fact, she was a founding member of, member of its internal development program for women. Today, she serves on the steering committee for Mitchell's Women Empower Network, an organization committed to helping female employees develop the skills required to assume leadership roles. 
Her efforts resonate across the industry as she is also the founding board member of the Alliance for Women in Workers' Compensation, an organization that encourages men and women to work together for the advancement of women and the industry overall. Thank you very much. I am quite honored uh, to be recognized this evening. I have been in technology for 40 years. And it is amazing to actually be in a room with this many wonderful women who have achieved so much. I actually would like to go back to college after seeing these young women. <laughs> They're incredible. And as I've worked these 40 years in high tech, one of the things I believe in and I would ask each and every one of you to do is just reach back and literally grab a hand or two of women in the organization and help them. They need that. Be a role model. It's really an easy thing to do. So each one reach one and it's amazing. You know, next year there'll be 2,000 people in this room. So thank you and I have to say to my Mitchell colleagues, I love this company. It is an amazing company. Actually, our executive leadership team is made up of 50% women. And that only happens when we have leaders, when we have leaders that are actually making the way and supporting and mentoring and giving back. And not only in your workplace, but do it in your community as well. So again, thank you all very, very much, and just continue. Each one, reach one. Thank you. I'm back. <laughs> this is a new category for Athena's Pinnacle Awards this year, and both Athena and Qualcomm are committed to nurturing entrepreneurship as a critical component of innovation. Athena recently partnered with my startup XX to mentor and fund startup companies. For the past 17 years, Qualcomm Ventures has been actively investing in startups around the world, providing companies with unparalleled access to leading expertise, a global network of wireless ecosystem partners and cutting edge technology. Our goal is simple, to provide startups with the guidance and support they need while on their road to success. The nominees for Pinnacle Startup category are well on their way to success, and we are very excited to present your 2017 Pinnacle Startup nominees. Abridge it. Coin up. Beats. Gaia fit. Lone hero. Precision Measurement Engineering and Aquasend, and Urban Translations. The Pinnacle Tech Startup winner is CoinUp. mobile donation app that allows users to virtually round up their credit and debit transactions and donate that spare change to a qualified charity of their choice. Co Co CoinUp's founder and CEO, Lena Petitar, drew upon her background as a CFO and auditor to ensure she built the best practices into her, her company and the highest levels of encryption and bank approved technologies into the app. This is a woman-led business with women representing 80% of the management team through Lena's perseverance, CoinUp has become the only officially approved mobile donation app with a choice of charity available to the Apple Store in the Apple Store. Allowing users to virtually donate their spare change is incredibly impactful for organizations. Ronald McDonald House, for example, collects approximately $27 million per year in physical spare change. At its core, CoinUp is a social impact company and as such attracts strong women leaders who are passionate about the nonprofit sector, providing an intersection where they apply skills and nurture compassion to find significance in their careers. Oh my gosh, I'm seriously just so shocked. <laughs> What an amazing group of women. Um, I'm so grateful to be surrounded by these inspiring women. And honestly, the best part 
of the journey for Coin Up has been the stories that I've heard and the people around us that have um, kept us going on this journey and kept inspiring us, especially women in the nonprofit world. Um, there's such a, um, a huge group of women that actually lead a lot of the nonprofits that we're surrounded with, and all the work they do is amazing, and the, the efforts and the time and the volunteering that they do is amazing. So um, this mission for Coin Up is really about um, supporting the nonprofits so we can help them raise funding so they can really just focus on their missions and not worry about the fundraising. They have so much work to do, and if we can just all support them through a little bit of spare change every day, um, we feel like they can keep accomplishing their missions and spend the time on what they're amazing at doing. Um, so actually, Athena's foundation just joined CoinUp a couple of days ago. So everyone can download CoinUp and donate to Athena if you didn't get a chance to tonight. Um, we'd love to make a huge impact for the women here and create more scholarships for all these amazing women that were here tonight. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Good evening. We know that change happens only when there is a conscious decision, an act of choice, and complete, complete commitment from the leaders who affect the change. All of the companies that are nominated for the Pinnacle Company of the Year exemplify the kind of leadership and commitment needed to create the change too long in coming. These are the leaders who will change how women are treated in the workplace, who actively work to improve diversity, who will recognize that when you have women on your team, your productivity and profitability will increase. On behalf of Sony, I am pleased to present the nominees for Pinnacle Company of the Year. Biolabs, San Diego. Canali Communications. DLA Piper. ESET. Everyone Counts. Illumina. KPMG. Miracosta College. Mitchell International, Oracle, and Rare Science. The Pinnacle Company of the Year Award goes to Mitchell International. International recognizes the value of a diverse workforce and takes a proactive approach to promoting women innovators. By integrating diverse leadership into its culture, Mitchell has set a tone of inclusion and created a positive environment for women at all levels to speak out and express their views. Launched as a grassroots effort by Mitchell employees in 2013, the Women in Power Network provides critical leadership coaching to develop the next generation of female leaders. Sponsored by both male and female department heads, the group tackles difficult subjects from work-life balance and women in technology to assertiveness, training, financial planning, and salary negotiation. Women in Power helps female team members connect both inside and outside Mitchell. Female executives share their career journeys, guidance, and wisdom with employees through the executive speaker series. These efforts created valuable opportunities for female innovators to showcase their experience while developing essential leadership skills. I'm squealing. Thank you, Athena, and everybody here. I am so proud to be the head of human resources for Mitchell International. We have a phenomenal team. Um, as Nina mentioned, half of our leadership team is actually women. And that is really due to a, an incredibly insightful CEO, Alex Sun, who really um, leads the charge with diversity in our organization. Um, as mentioned, the Women in Power Network was really a grassroots effort for the women in our organization. It's an incredibly inclusive organization that has grown over time and really created tremendous opportunities for our, all of our employees. So thank you very, very much, Athena, for this recognition. We are so thrilled. Thanks. Wow, right? What an amazing group of uh, award winners. Give them all a big hand, please. <laughs> Chill bumps? I mean, yeah. Megan, what yeah. do you think? 
amazing stories from the girls to Haben Girma to all of these winners. How can you not be excited about the women in this room? So thank you. Really grateful that you're here. I just want to uh, uh, shout out to, again, Athena is a volunteer organization. Uh, uh, largely, a lot of our members are here, our board, uh, our foundation board. And I just want to thank them for their efforts and their time. So if you could just please give it, give it up for that, that leadership. I'm also pleased to announce that we're actually ending this program a little early, which is great. That means we have more time to network and connect. I will tell you two more things, and then I will set you free. Uh, one is, next year, we're going to have a Pinnacle on May 3rd, which is going to be great. Hopefully, Megan can come back and join us. Uh, and then the other one is, is that today you received a survey in your email, and it is critically important that Athena, as we continue to do more research about what women in STEM need and how we can continue to close the gap, uh, to please, please take time to answer that survey. Um, and with that, that's all I have. Megan, how would you like to close it out? It was fast. <laughs> Go, ladies. <laughs> awesome. Go, team. Go with Team Athena. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. You did awesome.